In this example, we're going to see how to use the node voltage method with phasers. So, and as you'll see, it's exactly the same as how you did it in your circuits one class. So just kind of quickly to go over the circuit, we've got a, a current source that's given here is 10.6 cosine of 500 T. So our omega is going to be 500. Um, then we've got a 10 ohm resistor. And then up here at one ohm in series with a four millihenry inductor. And then down here, we've got a 400 microhenry, oops, not microhenry, micro farad capacitor. Let me fix that real quick. Micro farad capacitor. Up here, a 5 ohm resistor and then a, a dependent voltage source where the voltage is equal to 20 times Ix, and Ix is this current right here. And the problem wants us to find this current I sub A, I sub C, and I sub B, and give them as their steady state results. So the first thing we want to do is convert to phasers. So we'll kind of redraw everything, but with Phaser. So we'll have this current source and we'll have 10.6 at an angle of zero degrees. We've got some amps. And then same deal. This resistor is just 10 ohms. Let's pull it to see. That resistor is one ohm. But then we need to figure out what this inductor is. So let me circle that in blue. That's a four millihenry inductor. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's do it over here. Z L, we know is equal to J omega L, and that's equal to J times 500, times four times 10 to the third, 10 to the negative third. So Z L is equal to J two ohms. And while we're here in the mood, let's go ahead and find our Z sub C. Remember that's negative J times one over omega C. So that's gonna be negative J times one over 500 times 400 times 10 to the negative six. And that will give us a Z sub C of minus J five ohms. So there's our impedance for the inductor. There's our impedance for the capacitor. So we'll go ahead and tack it in here. We have the inductor and that's a J two omega. And then the capacitor and that's it minus J five omega. The other resistor that's at five ohms. And then of course we've got our dependent voltage source, which is still 20 IX. Bring everybody around to round. And now we're ready to actually solve this problem. So remember the node voltage method, you're just gonna to choose, you know, find your nodes up here. Let's go ahead and say, let's use red, right? Node one and node two. And we'll take a look and see that we've got a voltage here. We'll call this V1. Voltage there, that's V2. They come directly off the nodes. And let's put our reference ground down here like that. So we'll need to set up our equations for our nodes. And since we have a dependent voltage source here, we'll actually need to set up three equations. So the first equation is for this first node, and that's just gonna be, so remember we're looking at all of the currents coming into the node. So that first one is just gonna be 10.6 amps plus V1 over 10 ohms. That's this, this current here. And then coming from two to one, we'll have plus V1 minus V2 over one plus j two omega, and that's equal to zero. Then we'll have equation number two. 
So let's see, we'll have first coming from that way. So we'll have v2 minus v1 over 1 plus j2 omega plus, let's come from that way, we'll have v2 over minus j5 omega plus. Coming this way, we'll have v2 minus the voltage there, 20iX over 5 ohms, and that's again equal to 0. And then finally, we'll need the equation for iX, since that connects, goes from node 1 to node 2, we'll say that iX is equal to v2 minus v1. Let me double check that real fast. V1, never mind, got it backwards. V1 minus V2. Over one plus J2 omega. And there we go. There we have our three equations. Now, for the sake of time, it does take a little bit of time to solve this out, but you can use a tool like Wolfram Alpha, or you can work it out by hand, or use your calculator, whatever works for you. But once you crank out those values, here's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get that V1 is equal to 68.4 minus J, 16.8 volts. V2 is equal to 68 minus J, 26 volts. And then our current I sub X is equal to 3.76 plus J 1.68 amps. So now we're ready to actually solve for the things that we were sort of hunting for, right? So first, that current I sub A, if we scroll all the way back up here, we'll see that what I sub A was the current flowing through this 10 ohm resistor. So I sub A is just equal to V1 over 10. So that's 68.4 minus J 16.8 over 10, which is going to give us 6.84 minus J 1.68 amps. Now, so we, before we can convert it into its steady state form, we need to first convert it into its phasor form or excuse me, it's polar form. So that'll be what? Square root of 6.48 squared plus 1.68 squared at an angle of the inverse tangent of minus 1.68 over 6.84 degrees. So that'll give us a phasor of 7 0.04 at an angle of minus 13.8 degrees. And so now we can find our steady state form of A. I sub A of T is equal to 7.04 times the cosine. Remember, omega is 500 T minus 13.8 degrees in amps. So there's the first one. Up next would be IB. Now that one is a little bit trickier. That one is equal to, it's the current that's flowing through that dependent current source. So that IB is just gonna be V2 minus 20 IX over five ohms. And remember 20 IX, Excuse me, Ix was, what did we get for Ix? Uh, 3.76 plus J 1.68. And V2 was 68 minus J 26. So we'll have V2, which is 68 minus J 26 minus 20 times 3.76. plus J 1.68, all that over five. And when you punch that in your calculator, you're gonna get 
that I sub B is equal to minus 1.44 plus J 11.92. And like before, we need to convert it first into its polar form from its rectangular form so we can get the steady state solution. That's the square root of 1.44 squared plus 11.92 squared at an angle of the inverse tangent of 11.92 over minus 1.44 degrees. And that's going to get us a polar form of the phasor IB that is equal to 12 at an angle of 96.89 degrees. And that's in amps. So that means that our Time domain, steady state sinusoid here is equal to 12 times the cosine of 500t plus 96.89 degrees in amps. Finally, I sub c is the one that drops through that capacitor. So I sub c is just equal to v2 over minus j5. So that's equal to 68 minus J26 volts over minus J5 ohms. A little bit of arithmetic and you're going to get that's equal to 5.2 plus J13.6. Not amps, not ohms, but amps. And like with the rest of them, let's go ahead and find the polar form. I sub C is equal to the square root of 5.2 squared plus 13.6 at an angle of the inverse tangent of 13.6 over 5.2 degrees gives us a polar form of the phasor I sub C that is 14.56 at an angle of 69.08 degrees. And then we put that in our steady state form. The steady state sinusoid current of I sub C is equal to 14.56 times the cosine of 500t plus 69.08 degrees. And there we go. That is the node voltage method. Just as messy and gross as you remember it. Um, but nothing at all different than what you already learned in your Circuits 1 class. Once you convert everything to phasers, it's all just Circuits 1 all over again. So, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this one, please let me know. Um, and if not, I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to do an example of the mesh current method. So, I'll see you guys then.